No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. First time doing an interview on the new set. So I had to with somebody who I really with. Oh, bro. Lil Zay Osama is in the building. One of the realest, man. Lil Zay Osama, the trench baby, man. No Jumper, y'all know what it is. You're somebody who I interviewed in the back of the bike shop a couple years ago. So how, how you feel about this? A little bit nicer? I just, when I came in, I'm sure like, damn, Adam turned up. He got the whole building, staff, rooms, everything. This is what bro. you can do when you uh, don't buy any Dior or Louis Vuitton. Oh, you can still do it if you buy it, <laughs> depending on how much money you make. You just got to make it work. Yeah, no, yeah. but that's what I think. I'm like, man, I could have bought hella Balenciaga shoes, but I bought this fucking office building instead. That was the smartest thing you could do. It's like a long-term investment. For sure that. But you got the fly as Da Vinci suit, so what can I say? I had this shit on yesterday. You, you got know. your name on your shoes. I'm a trap. I had this shit on yesterday. I just put on the shoes today, though. Wait, wait, wait. That's your face on the side of it, too? Huh? Yeah, my face. Where did these come it. from? Um, Tip Customs. Oh, shit. So they just showed up, or you told them, like, no, I need, I need I some at, shoes? I was at one of my shows in Rock Island. Okay. I been DM and told him I want the shoes because he tagged me in them when he made them. Right. He ain't never respond back, but he popped up backstage at the show and brought me the shoes, though. That's fire. I don't know if I would wear shoes with my own face on it, though. Hell yeah, these bitches are hard. What if you scuff them up? You fucking ruin your own face. Nah, I ain't gonna scuff them up. You get too much I'm respect. I'm gonna put these bitches in the frame as soon as I'm done with them. So you wear them like once or twice and then you're gonna throw them yeah. up on the wall? Today probably the only day I'm gonna win for real. I'm like, I'm going to no jumper. Let me go and throw them my exclusives. That's fire. Damn, bro. You need a new fit for every show or can you rock the same fit for like multiple shows in a row? I ain't gonna lie, I need a fit for air show. Mm. I need a fit for air show or I like a fuck around do like a different shirt, same pants, or same mm. pants, different shirt. It's just pieces. You pants, know? you got to be able to use more than once. Yeah, you can sure. use them more than once, but it just depends on what environment you're going in. But the real cheat code I know for I know for rappers is that they'll have like they'll they'll rock like a black Calvin Klein shirt, but have all the chains on over it, and so that the average person doesn't even notice that they're just wearing a twenty dollars shirt. Yeah, that's smart though. Mm. That's smart though. You told me you didn't have time to go get your jewelry because I I was rushing you to get here. Well, they was rushing me. They was like, come on, uh, we can't miss this again. We already missed it once. Because we were supposed to do it like three weeks ago or something, right? Yep. Hell yeah. Okay. I left that shit in the drawer. But how many chains you got at this point? Mm, like three. Okay. I'm light right now. I'm going to go get some more big shit. You already know. It's turnt right now. Really? I got to pop out the wood works with. Yeah, I got to act a fool, man. You know it. You know, it feels like your career is like kind of reaching another high point right now oh yeah for sure yeah, yeah. shout out my brother smirk on bro right i mean it's a beautiful thing because like i remember when i first interviewed you that i it was like the moment where we had just started fucking with your music so it's like i was interviewing you while listening to your shit like probably getting in the car and driving back listening to it after that because it had just kind of really and, and i know you've been making was, music just, for a long time was, before that mm -hmm. yeah i was just getting in i was just getting into to the like industry real LA lifestyle and some more shit. Right. When I came to fuck with you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, those were kind of like early days of I don't know what you call when I it. First but... got signed. That's when I first got signed. Ah, okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I was yeah, it started going LA. up crazy, and I I feel like you were real early on like uh, some of the like pain music type shit that mm -hmm. a lot of people kind of talk about and make now. Mm -hmm. I feel like you were sort of early on that wave. I I created that wave. You created it. I created that wave. All the pain shit, that's me. Okay. Especially in Chicago. Okay. Like, you hear pain, think of pain, you gonna think of Zay. Right. You know what I'm Even like all my drill music I'm making now, they like, bro, please drop some pain. That's why I gave them that Trench Baby 3 tape. Like, what? I you if you notice, I did the first songs, drill. Like, the first mm. six, the six to eight songs, drill. Next six to eight songs is like pain. Right. Yeah. That's it. So to you, it's two completely different styles of making music? Yeah, it's two, it's two completely different, different styles. Different beats. Yeah. Different beats, different melodies. Right. Yeah. So. Do you got to be in the right state of mind to make one versus the other? It all depends on how I'm feeling that day for real or what happened. or Right. You know, it all depends for real. It's all energy. I mean, I feel that because sometimes I get in the car and I want to listen to Young Boy, No Cap, that type of shit that's a little bit more emotional. And sometimes I want to listen to Dirk or I want to listen to Vaughn. I want to listen to some straight violent shit. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm the same way. Right. So when I want to listen to some pain, I go turn on my pain shit. When I want to listen to some gang shit, I go turn on my gang shit. Or I turn on some smirk shit or right. you know, one of my homies or something. Yeah, it makes sense. For sure. Um, what do you enjoy making more, though? Like, what, what do you feel like is actually the... I ain't going to lie. I enjoy making pain music more. It's like, more you? It's it's more me because I'm a storyteller. I still I tell stories. Right. And like... With all the shit going up off the drill music, like, ah, Zay, yeah, drop some more drill, drop some more drill, drop some more. Everybody in my ear, drill, 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 drill. 
But the drill ain't really what got me there. The drill. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah. when I interviewed you, I remember you. I don't think you said I don't make drill music, but you were sort of like, no, nah, I, don't, I don't do like that traditional yeah, rap I ain't, type I shit. Ain't because I'm like more of a real artist. Right. You know, people nowadays that do more to like drill, drill all day, they can say anything. Mm. It's not a story. They just talking. You know what I'm saying? So they can make that shit all day. That's not no real artist. Right. You got to be versatile. You got to know how to switch the melodies. Talk about shit. Like, niggas would go from jewelry to a bitch to a car. 50 subjects in a song. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck is you talking about? I'm lost now. Right. I like to keep my shit on track from beginning to end. You I like gotta that. You got to understand yeah. it. As an old school rap fan, I like that a lot. I don't like when like ver like bar one is about how they got a dope car yeah. and bar two is about how they got a bad bitch and bar three is some other shit. It's like I like and especially when like the hook clearly indicates that this song is gonna be in a certain direction yeah. and then the artist is just bouncing all over the yeah, place. First it was about a girl, then the whole verse about a, a drill. Right. It don't make sense. Yeah. Definitely. Gotta, gotta do better. Um Artist. But okay, when you make drill music, do you feel like you have to give them a little bit of like real life in terms of because that's really like what made when drill I, huge, when right? I make, when I make drill music, it's only my real lifestyle. It's only what I experienced, what I've been through, what my homie them doing and going through now. Right. If you we ain't gonna say, oh, such and such killed him to, uh, and put a nigga out there. Right. But you know, we're gonna be subliminal about a lot of shit and we're gonna talk about whatever we want, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's how we just. That's how I make drill music. You, know you ever record a bar and then you have to just like delete it and be like, nah, it's too much. Hell yeah, <laughs> I recorded a bar. I'm like, ooh, oh bro, let me take that out. Folks, you think I should take this out? Yeah, you went too crazy. But it kind of hurts you in your heart because yeah. you're like, like, damn. Ooh, if they hit this right here, ooh, that's they turn. Oh, right. Man. Or you could yeah. just you could throw a disclaimer on the whole fucking album like Dirk did and just say, this is all cap. This is not. Packs, oh, yeah. Whatever he that, said. That, that, was, that was one of the smartest moves Blood could do. Right. Just all cap. Oh, bro. That immediately made me wonder, like, what are Dirk's conversations with his lawyers like? Because I feel like that is something where maybe the lawyer told him, like, listen, like, this would be a good idea. This might help you out in the future. You know, they be trying to they they trying to use lyrics against people, all that shit nowadays. I heard it just got banned though, some shit somewhere. Well, they're working on some stuff because I guess in California there's a bill that looks like it might pass. And it's it's not saying that they can never use rap lyrics, but it's saying that they can't use rap lyrics that don't pertain to the specific scenario. So I think that it would probably eliminate some stuff like a rapper saying hey I, I got 10 guns and then they're like oh well he got caught with 10 guns and he said it in the song he had 10 guns so of course they're his guns right, right, but right, if you right, have right. a bar that's like March 27th we slid on your little cousin I'm pretty sure that's still good to go but I'm, I'm quite sure a nigga make the song about the 10 guns after they beat the case or got over the case or something oh you see that all the time yeah <laughs> I was watching an interview with somebody yesterday. So how the fuck is they going to go and get him again after the case already over with and he talked about it in the song after? Well, no, but I think, because you can't, that's double jeopardy. You can't try yeah, somebody for the same charge again. twice. Yeah. But I mean, a lot of these dudes are really like doing some crazy shit and then like basically recording a song about it the next day and the song's been out for six months while the police are trying to solve the crime. Yeah, yeah. And you know, half the, half the cops are sitting, driving in the car, listening to the lyrics, thinking like, hmm. That's dumb as hell, but I ain't going <laughs> to lie. That's why I love my city because I feel like it ain't, it ain't like that. Like how you, you know how you in New York, you get caught with a gun, bro. They'll give mm. you 10, 15 years. Like, boy, you'll get caught with a gun in the rack and get out tomorrow on I bond or something. I know. And I heard you know, that like, in, in New York, it's like almost impossible to carry a legal gun. But in Chicago, I heard it's actually not that hard to get certified for a concealed carry. But it's I feel not. like obviously a lot of people still aren't going to do it, right? It's not. It's just people just too lazy and too goofy to take the time out their day to go get a conceal to take the classes or pay the money. Right. People don't do it. They but really you're just at walk around with illegal shit. You're at the point in your career now where it starts to become all right. Maybe I should have real security I when lie. I pull up to certain things. I ain't gonna lie, I start getting this little feeling like I need to go get my uh, concealed carry. You know, I ain't got no real cases no more. I, I did juvenile life. All my cases old and shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like I'm thinking in my mind like, damn, I do need to go get concealed carry. Shit, I'm in this position. I can't let nothing stop me or get in the way. You feel me? So I could be riding around with choppers or handguns and all this type of shit. With nobody, just me. Get Beautiful thing, over. yeah. All that police ain't gonna do shit. You feel me? So I, I had that thought. You know what I'm saying? I just gotta take the time on my day to go do it. I be doing a lot of running around, but I do use security sometimes. Though. Right. I you mean, there, there's been various times where I realized how top rappers move around. And that there'll be like a top rapper who gets into a situation and he has three armed security, three of his homies who got guns, three, you know, like a real like they're being so on top of it. So when I hear about some shit like that, I'm like, well, bro, if you're if you're a famous person in hip hop rolling around with one security guard is like 
an easy decision, right? Right. Not all the time, obviously, because you got to still wake up in the morning and be a normal person. But when yeah. you're going out, you're going to the club, you're going doing whatever, I mean, you gotta be gotta be safe these days. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I just go out the crib. Oh hell yeah. Dolo all the time. <laughs> I go out the crib. Dolo I ain't gonna. I don't. Don't know security live in the same house with me or you know they be having their own lives going on too so i'd be like hey man i need you over here i had 30 40 minutes it's over with i'm already gone right i got shit to do yeah oh bro and really i feel like when you're doing nice stuff but that's the shit that gets people caught up it's like all right last night i went to a fancy restaurant i had to do a meeting whatever i would never even think about bringing security to do that kind of thing but you also know this is hollywood and people get caught leaving the valet, and people follow them, or people fucking track your I car. Ain't gonna lie, all these crazy ass LA stories. Like I've been in LA for a minute, coming back and forth. Me and all my homies. God forbid, we ain't never ran into no incident like that, and it still don't feel like it's like that. Right. It don't feel like you gotta watch out, or like it don't feel like that to me. I don't know why. And I've been out here for a long, a long time. Yeah. But you're also not moving around like a dummy. I feel like I ain't moving around like no dummy. For a lot sure. of people moving around like dummies. Yeah, niggas just walking up mail rolls and shit, yeah. all that goofy shit. And if you walk around, no security, no shooters, you got fifty thousand dollar watch on. I mean, whatever happens to you is kind of your own I ain't fault. Ain't gonna lie, yesterday we was leaving out the store. My homie like, boy, them niggas was just watching us right there. Really? Yeah. We we come out the store. They all standing right there in the front by their car. You feel me? So you know, I got on all my J. I got my daughter with me. You know. Phone them already on them though. Right. But we just seeing them just looking. Hey, what up? Yeah, we know you is. Yeah, what up? Ooh. They were just looking, feeling the, the situation they out. Just, they were just looking. All right, but you know, I'd be waiting on some shit to go down. Mm. So get what they looking for. That's <laughs> that, I mean, that's the right mentality. Your mentality can't be, I'ma just try to avoid everything. Your, your mentality know, has to be like, Look, I'm ready for whatever. My mentality is still the same as if I'm in Iraq. I'm like this all the day. I'm, I'm like this all day. Like, I'm always on P's and Q's. I ain't trying to hit nothing. You ain't safety first, you know? Okay, but what's the status of Chicago in terms of, like, everybody says how L.A. is way crazier right now than it used to be a couple of years ago. How do, you, how do you feel about where Chicago's at? I don't feel like L.A. is crazy. That's first of all. <laughs> but, like, I feel like Chicago, like, <sighs> what can I say about Chicago? It's a lot of miscellaneous, goofy-ass killing. I feel like it is getting worse because it ain't no structure, ain't mm -hmm. no guidance. You know what I'm saying? So these youngins, they just growing up watching these videos, gun, gun, gun. You know, like, they just, just a lot of negative shit on the internet. And, you know, kids, they got funk. My daughter, she on the phone all day on YouTube. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's just certain shit, like, influence these kids. Like, But does she watch anything that worries you? She watch all my videos. Okay. All my videos, and it could be some bad in that, too, because I talk about a lot of other shit, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, my girl, just let her listen to it, let her watch the shit, because all she thinks, she don't think about the negative shit. She just say, that, 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 yeah. that, you know what I'm saying? Wait, how old? She two. Oh, my kid's almost two, too. Yeah, my son my son and my daughter, they three and four. Okay. They watch all my videos all the time, too. They say the same thing. Oh, yeah. Gotta... My kid listens to all the worst rap music on earth, for sure. She probably knows King Von songs by heart at this point, but <laughs> she ain't at the age where she's yeah, going to be like, yeah. so what was he saying about yeah. in verse two? By the time she get older, she's going to forget about that shit. Yeah, yeah. But also, I think about myself. I swear, I was like 11 or 12 when I realized that I was listening to like Jay-Z and Freeway and Beanie Siegel and they were talking about cooking a lot and then I realized they're talking about cooking crack. They're not talking oh, about so cooking that, food. So did that make you want to be a dope boy or, or what? No, but it definitely made me feel like a fucking idiot that it took me that long to realize that they weren't talking about like bacon salmon or some shit. Who the fuck would be talking about that in the song? I mean, they're talking about cooking. Nah, one nine hundred hustler. Come on, man. You know Jay Z whole image. You know he could. Yeah, but I'm saying I was like ten, shit. eleven years old, and like crack doesn't really make sense in my head yet. I'm like not really knowing that this is something that you have to cook. <laughs> Even yeah, right now, I could I couldn't do it if I had to do it. I'd have to look up a YouTube tutorial or something. But, but I mean, I I got, one, teach you. <laughs> you got me? Yeah. one one nine hundred hustler. He says something about like get you a bitch that cook good, and I'm just like. That's the first thing you got to do when you get to town? You got to find a girl to cook for you? Like, why don't you just get some fast food? And then once nah, the, you yeah. cook crack, right? Okay, I got you. Yeah. No, nah, I think you, you, you're taking it wrong. No. Get you a bitch that cook good? I forget the exact lyric. But they were talking about, like, setting up shop in a new town and shit. Like, they were definitely talking about cooking crack. Oh. Uh, because you could go to Carl's maybe Jr. They, maybe they, I don't know. 
that maybe they was just in the era where they had bitches cooking they crack. I mean, in this day and age where you can find a chef on Instagram, you <laughs> could you could be talking about either one for sure. Bro. What you eating? Me? Yeah. What's the diet like? I ain't gonna lie. Um You on your healthy shit, yeah, you're I still just doing whatever. I'm still really, really eating whatever for real, but like I'm trying to work out of shit and all that shit so mm. I can get my Six pack, get my shit in order. You know what I'm saying? It can't hurt. So I can take off my shirt at these shows. How these bitches going crazy? Shit. Although I like a rapper who'll take his shirt off despite being fat as fuck. That's hard. <laughs> you funny. As I was telling man. House Phone that I was like, bro, if you're a rapper, next time you perform, take your fucking shirt off. Who cares if you're fat? Nah. <laughs> if you fat as hell, you bogus as hell taking off your shirt. I could make a list of rappers. You got stretch marks everywhere. Rose Popping everywhere. rappers. I know no, pop huge like, rappers no, that are on stage. They weigh 400 pounds. They got the shirt off. Everybody cheering for them. Nobody's thinking why about you, it. Why you think Why you think these rappers go get all these fucking tattoos and they fat as hell? They trying to have their stretch marks and shit. They yeah. trying to make their body look good some way. Right. So motherfucker forget about you fat as hell. Hmm. I know some people who got bullet holes and they, they still write the shirt off. They don't give a fuck. They look like their whole stomach is mutating into something different. Nah, I'm different. I want my <laughs> I want my shit set up the right way. I want to look good when I take you, off. You you want to get the lipo though? I would never get no. You never do it. Playing, <laughs> never get no. It's commonplace now. And this shit ain't common where we from. Yeah. You get lipo, your ass gay. Mm. That's for anybody. Damn. Your ass gay if you get lipo. We might have just started a shot town war right there. Ain't who on war? Nobody. The people who are getting lipo. No, nah, they ain't going to war over no shit like that. Let me ask you this. Over the course of, like, the last time we interviewed, like, three years ago, I guess, what's been going How would you describe where you've been at throughout that? Because I feel like, you know, you first had those songs go viral, and then it's like ever since then you've been trying to figure out, like, all right, exactly how do I proceed from here? But what, what were those years like? Um, It was, like, more like just trying to figure out what my fans want, like, figure out um, what songs to drop and timing, you know, like, I was going through a lot of shit with managers, like, switching managers. Mm. It was just a lot of shit within my career, you know what I'm saying, that I was going through because, because um, I had dropped this this reggae song, right? You know, I do the drill, I do the all these different type of genres of music. But we had dropped the reggae song, and I feel like that's where my career took like a fall at. Really? When I dropped that reggae song. See, I don't like, even remember the song. A, it was a dope song, you know what I'm saying? It's a nice song, but it was bad timing. You think it was too much of a risk? It was bad timing. It was just like they not going to accept anything from me mm. just yet. I'm not that big enough for them to just be like, hey, Jay, Jay dropped this. Let's go listen to it. At that time, it wasn't like that, you know what I'm saying? So right. it was like when I dropped that, they was all looking like, this gangsta ass nigga, what the fuck is he doing? I right. Mean, like, you know what I'm saying? So I dropped that. That shit flopped. That shit was weak as hell. Went down, you know? So I just had to get back to myself with the drill and the pain, you feel me? And get but, the fans what they want again, bro, you know? Was that a weird feeling, though? Because as a rapper, when when you start popping off, you start to get the feeling of, oh, I could drop whatever, and these it, people are going to fuck with it. Yeah, Were you it getting a little too confident? I was, I was getting a little bit too confident, for sure. I'm still is, you know mm. what I'm saying? But it's just... You just gotta know, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm if I'm doing all this gangster drill music and all this pain music, and then I come out the blue with some type of other style of rap, everybody gonna be like, "What the fuck is he doing? Go back to your old ways or old flows." Like you getting in the industry and trying to do anything. Right. That's how they looking at it. I mean, even you know? Drake got a lot of hate for dropping that dance album. What dance? Album? And that's Drake. Uh, his most recent project was like very little rap, and it was mostly like club type beats and it was more like dance music that was a huge risk really if you look at drake i feel like it's drake so people kind of are used to him trying a lot of different types of music and all things considered it probably did pretty well but at the same time i mean even if you're drake if you drop a project that is totally different than what they're used to then it's like pretty likely that you're going to get some kind of reaction all right definitely so you didn't even know that i went to o block no i didn't know you went to o block how do you feel about that you think that was a smart idea yeah, you you know, you be all on these interviews and all in LA and shit. Like, you know, you, you come to the rack and connect with the people more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers gonna fuck with you more. You really popped out in the trenches, gave back. 
chilled with some of the members, you know, like yeah. niggas fuck with that. They love that. A lot of interviewers going to just bounce out here on the tr trenches and just do that. It's good to humanize it, you know, because you're used yeah. to hearing about this place as this fucking murderous ass place. But then when yeah. I actually go there, it's, everybody it's hanging out, good. smiles on their faces, no fights, no bad shit. Everybody chilling, smoking weed, exactly. Fredo Banks shooting a video randomly right there. It's, you know, it was a totally different vibe than that's, what I expected. That, and that's why I just feel like for Chicago, I feel like motherfuckers could really bring this shit together for real. Cause like, for real, for real, only motherfuckers left is everybody that fuck with each other. Mm. You know, everybody else that's out here, niggas either dead in jail or ain't on shit. Mm. Everybody like literally from the rappers and shit that's in Chicago that's popping and woo, they fuck with each other. Mm. We could bring this shit together, like you know. But right. It don't just take one. Well, it know? was interesting because I was talking to Shoebox Baby. I realized that he himself has decided that he wasn't going to diss his ops in his music. It's it's pointless. Mm. Fuck that shit. We getting money. We trying to go up. We trying to take care of families and kids. Like, longevity. You and me, we ain't trying to right. crash out. Because if you did that kind of song right now, it's more likely to just get attention from just the city. It's not really going to be anything city. outside there. It ain't going to be no real wide shit. You know? Right. And that's what niggas brains be this small that's mm. what i be telling my homie them like we can't just keep on dissing the option doing all this music only for the city right you know what i'm saying we gotta do this shit for the world yeah we trying to be bigger than ever you know but to be fair dirk is at the craziest level that we've really seen anybody from chicago get to in terms of street rap and he still very much will let you know how he feels about some shit involving uh yeah but he ain't just know. like Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. This, this dead person. This, that dead person. He'll say like, it in a creative way, but everybody, exactly, everybody knows. But that's the way he's supposed to say it. Yeah. Though. He's in a higher place. He's in a higher space. Like he ain't supposed to say no names or, like he's supposed to do it how he do it. But that's the tribute thing is he's dropping bars that are for the people who watch all the YouTube shit and know about who was doing what in a vlog and who who said what yada yada. It's like. The, some of the bars might be missed. Might ninety five percent of the audience might not know what the fuck he's talking about, but the fucking real diehard fans still like knowing that he's willing to talk about shit that's real to him. Right. Because a lot of times that's the biggest problem as a rapper is that you get to the point where nothing that you talk about feels real or important. You know. No hell no. But that's why you gotta like stay connected with the people. Like niggas be niggas be getting on and like go to LA and never go back to their city go to LA and sit in the house and play the game like niggas whole lives and mindsets change so niggas gonna be outside getting the whiff of really what's going on staying in tune with the culture so how you gonna make music and you don't even know what the fuck going on now you can't make no songs about the streets and you don't know what's going on in the streets right but that's kind of the like, dream too right what to be able to uh can we turn the who's, who's phone? That's, that's my phone oh it's yours um that's kind of the dream, right? Be able to duck off. Like for me personally, yeah, if I'm able to, to that, just leave everything alone and just be in the crib, no, that's pretty but, nice, right? But really, you're not able to leave everything alone and be in the crib because yo, you, you're not financially stable for real. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Well, niggas some people be acting, are. Niggas be acting like it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Niggas be acting like it. Once you get to that space where you can really kick your feet up and you got money coming in and you ain't got to go nowhere, mm. then you can really right. get that comfortable and do it too, you know? Because, I mean, Sosa is the definitive get money, be like, fuck this shit, move, move, get the mansion, be posted up in, in California and not really ever have to deal with any of the Chicago yeah, bullshit like, ever again. How we look at Sosa, like Sosa to go to the drill music, you yeah. feel me, all that. But like, Sosa, like, kind of in a, in a in a little bit of way, like he disconnected from the trenches. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he not in the trenches no more, so he can't really get you that slang, that talk, that real, real that niggas going through on the daily and shit that's happening on the daily, he can't talk about now because he ain't living now. You know what I'm saying? But I'm to be yeah. fair, he basically, like, can't go back to Chicago, right? Because the cops are going to arrest him if he goes back there. He can't play shows there. Like, his shit's all fucked up when it comes to going to Chicago. So it's very understandable why he would make this decision. And he also is just kind of that kind of person. He's right. he's quiet. He's to himself. He's not necessarily Mr. I ain't gonna lie. You know niggas change. I ain't saw Sosa since 2012, bro. For real? Yeah. Yeah, other than like rolling loud and shit, like, and we still ain't even talk at those events. But like, I ain't seen Sosa since 2012, since we was in Ken basement. You feel really? What I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. you said that you were around during his whole early come yeah, up. What I, What yeah. was it like during those days? I mean, really, blood. Like, he was just in the studio all the time recording. Like, right. Most, wherever they needed to go, they went where they needed to go and came right back to Ken crib to record type shit. You know so what did I mean? you know Ken first? 
I know Ken. You knew Ken, uh, the DJ Ken first, no, before I, you knew Sosa. No, I knew oh, okay. both of them at the same time. Okay. When I met Sosa, I met Ken. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Or well, it was Ken. I don't know if I can't remember if Ken was coming down there to our studio on 47 in Prairie, because that's when Buck 20 Brick Boys was around and shit like that. And Ken used to come down there. Leaky Leak used to go down there. You know, my cousin was Leaky Leak. He made all social beats and shit. Right, yeah. RP, I Leaky heard you Leak, talking he about died. that, yeah. yeah. But so, okay, at that time, were you just happy to be around? Or were you I thinking, wasn't happy to be around. I'm going to be just, a rapper. It was just life. It was just regular. Right. I ain't know social was going to blow up. I ain't know nobody was around him was going to be nothing. It was just gang banging street shit. You know me, I was there for the studio. I was there, you know what I'm saying, just kicking it. You right. feel me? But so you, you were thinking about how to get your own rap career going even then? Hell yeah, I was thinking, I, I had it going, you know what I'm saying? Right, you were, you were already dropping. Yeah, yeah Sosie even like, man, Zay, write something for me. Really? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. Look, like, I used to be with a group called Crew Kid, so every time you see me, Crew Kid, you know what I'm saying? Like, saying my name, shit like that, you know? Wow. But I ain't seen, so I don't know how he act, I don't know how he is no more, you know, niggas right. change, so I ain't seen him. But I mean, I, I just think, when every time I've been around him, he seems very happy to be smoking his weed and chilling in the studio, and he just seems like he got money and didn't really feel the need to do anything much more than that, you know, and, be posted and, and, up. And long as you know that, and you that comfortable, and you feel me, you can lay back, you ain't gotta go back to the trenches, you ain't gotta adapt to the people, the culture, whatever, you could do you and stay in your lane. Right. So if he that financially stable to not be connected to the trenches, it, it's cool, hey. But you were saying that after that time period that you felt like you would have blown up sooner, but you just kept getting locked up? I kept getting locked up. I don't know what the fuck was going on. I don't even know what was going on. My Bad man. luck or were you wilding out? I ain't going to lie. A little bit of both? I, I was wilding out, bro. <laughs> I used to be stealing cars, robbing motherfuckers. I used to be doing all type of goofy You were a Kia shit. boy? Huh? You were a Kia boy? The fuck is that? You ain't heard about that? Yeah, There's no. a new new crew called the Kia Boys. They just they're all about just stealing Kias because I guess they're easy to steal. It's a new movement. It's taking over the whole country. They probably got them in Chicago. No, nah, they ain't got them in <laughs> Chicago. But but you used to steal cars just what just for fun? Yeah, no, nah, we used to steal cars, slide out them bitches. We used to steal cars to pull up on the hoes. So when you pull up, they like. Ugh. Benz, you know this 2012 we 15 14 years old 13 we pulling up to school in the bins or Altima or something right these hoes going crazy <laughs> um, bro we telling they have, these are real cars baby right <laughs> man if i had known how to steal a car when i was 15 16 holy shit i might have been doing that every weekend see see we we used to we used to wake up seven six in the morning five in the morning like you know we used to go to the good neighborhoods Five, six in the morning, you really going outside, starting your car for work, going back in the crib. Mm. The whole time, we come right off the block, steal your shit. Sky, we got keys and everything. Wow. I never thought about that. I, my parents would make me do that when I was and a kid. And we used to be doing the hotels, like, you know how the hotel valet people? Yeah. They be so fucking slow, they'll get your key away. All you got to do is come and say you lost your thing, they going to get your key away. Oh. We go right to the garage. Pump, pump, pump. That bitch right there, we gone, gang. I don't know what in them bitch. Oh man, that's fucked up. I might never give my car to the valet again. Man, this shit even going on right now. Valet people be fluky as hell. You were never a scammer? Who? You were never a scammer? No, I did some everything, oh, bro. Oh, really? Tapped in? I, I did some everything, bro. Okay. Bro, I'm experienced as hell. <laughs> is that shit still big in Chicago, though? What? The scamming culture? That shit big everywhere. It is still. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't know how the fuck they get away with it. Feels like everybody should be so on point at this point that they should see it coming. In niggas terms how, of the employees. How they ups and downs and shit, you just don't see it. Right. Makes sense. Um, so when did you actually first meet Dirk? I met Dirk um what they were like oh nine or some shit. Okay. I was I was fucking with um L E P. L.E.P. Bogus Boys. I remember them. They were e, big. Yeah, E. He was the um, manager over there. Right. And he had. I. I was. He was my manager at the time. You feel what I'm saying? And Dirk stayed. Dirk Grandma stayed right across the street from the studio. Okay. Type shit. So he had told Dirk come over there and shit one day. I just shook up with him. Say what up and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? This one. I'm ahead about myself. All that shit was out. Right. That was the first time I met Blood. Then over time, you know, I'm growing up, going, getting, going through jails, all that shit. I got out, Dirk was like even bigger than what he was, you know what I'm saying? Right. Then, 
Because he's but, one of the very few rappers who's been able to just keep consistently grinding and keep yeah, consistently and getting bigger. Yeah, he was, he was, he was, yeah. Blood it's DVC. motivational because a lot of rappers, I feel like they, they pop off a little bit and then they keep trying, but it doesn't go anywhere and they feel like they have to give up at some point. Dirk has been through periods where I'm sure he felt like his shit was kind of stagnating early on and he yeah. just pushed through it and kept getting yeah. better with the music, you That's know? That's how I am. Mm. That's how I am. Keep going, don't ever stop. Yeah. But yeah, Blood, um, when I had got out of jail and shit like that, I had got SB as my manager. Okay. That was Dirk manager. Right. But then when I had got out, he wasn't Dirk manager no more. He was just still around type shit. You right. know what I'm saying? Because D thing, Dirk brother. And um, SB would take me to the studio with Dirk. Like we went to Miami, we was in the studio. I was in the studio with Dirk and shit. We made one song. You know, it was just like his people fuck with my people, my people fuck with his people. Mm. You know, my cousin Jay Money was from O Block that died. You know what I'm saying? That was one of Dirk close friends. Like, it's just a lot of ties with us. Right. Yeah. But so on a personal level, like, did you really start to vibe while you were in the studio and start getting yeah, along yeah, and yeah. shit? On a per like, that's like my mentor, you feel me? So blood, pull up on me, talk to me, chop it up, you feel me? We go to the studio. Right. All that. I yeah. mean, he's, like, he, he got my number, I got his number, we text, like, all that. We talk about, like, the pain music versus the drill shit. I mean, he's somebody who's really kind of mastered that, and he also does shit that's damn near, like, R&B type shit that's more yeah. for the girls and everything. Yeah. He can kind of, like, easily can navigate go in all that. any direction, just yeah. like me. Like, we go in any direction, bro. We real versatile. We real artists, bro. Right. And so yeah. th the song that you put out that's been blowing up, Fuck My Cousin. Fuck My Cousin, yeah. When, when did that actually come together, and did you know that that was going to be the first song that you, like, publicly released together? I knew that I wanted to have Dirk on the song. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But Blood doing his own thing. You know, he got a lot of shit going on, so I ain't want to just overly be like, hey, hey, hop on this, hop on this, hop. You know what I'm saying? So I sent it to him. I'm like, Blood, let me know. You feel what I'm saying? And he came back like, shit, I'm willing to do whatever for you. You my brother, nigga, like. Whatever you need from me, I'm behind you 100%. Like, That's what's fine. up? What's gonna do? Here go the song. Right. You know what I'm saying? But so you you had already made it, and then you sent it to him? Yeah, I made it. I made it at first. So were you surprised that he was wilding on the verse? Hell, <laughs> motherfucker, no, I wasn't. I, was, I knew he was going to act dumb on it. That's why I said, man, Dur I need Dirk on this. Right. You feel what I'm saying? The it right. just had that real drill feel like that, you know? Right. Okay, it was me, my energy on that motherfucker. I meant everything I said. You me know what I'm me as a, a fan, real, true story. and I know you as a person, I know you're not on some fake shit, but the first thing I thought when I saw Lil Zay featuring Dirk, I thought, okay, I'm going to watch this, and I'm, I feel like by the time I'm done watching this, I'm going to know if Dirk really fucks with him or if this is just a song. Right. And by the end of Dirk's verse, I'm like, he would never give a verse like this to somebody unless he really felt strongly uh, about exactly. them, you know? He, man, blew a body that shit. I could sing his verse from front to back. Right. And bro, like, bro, killed that shit on, bro. But you, so what was your reaction, though, when you heard it? You were like, wow, he chose to when really I, address some specific shit here. When I heard it, um, no, matter of fact, the first time I heard it was he when he, he, he when I sent it to him, he FaceTimed me in the studio. Mm -hmm. He had the crib in the studio by himself. Yeah, I just finished this shit. I'm going to let you hear it. He pressed play on that bitch. Boom. Listening to that bitch. Once I hear him talking that talk, I'm on J Money, boy. You just acted bad on my daughter. <laughs> send that bitch to me right now. <laughs> he often have my engineer mix it. I'm gonna send it to you. Da -da -da -da. Right. Um, blood, we get to talking up about some other shit then. You know, we hang up. Blood, send that shit to me. We shoot the video. We put he pulled up to the video with a million in cash. A million in cash. Yeah, niggas don't just do that. That's how you know, like we real loud locked in for like he pulled up me in the cash. I wonder how long you had that for. Because every time I've had like 20 grand the in money, cash, I'm like, money, I got to put this in the bank. The money looked it fresh. It looked like it just came out. Yeah. yeah. You ever see that where a rapper be dragging around the same 50K for a couple of years? <laughs> yeah. I'm not doing that, bro. Start to look dog-eared. I, like, I got like 60K in the bag right now. I ain't, I ain't had that shit for more than goddamn in the day. What's that? Like you just run into the drank man? You might need that? No, nah, hell no. Nah. I might want to shop. It's my girl' birthday, birthday September first too, so I'm finna act a fool. You know that. Shit, I might want to shop too. That's why I got a credit card. You funny as hell. Bro, that doesn't work. We we max those out. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, nah, but you are right though, because half the time I go to buy some designer on credit card, they're like, "Oh, you gotta call the bank," and nah. then I'm mad, embarrassed in the Gucci store on the phone with the bank. But nah, actually, they it, do that it don't happen anymore. But it was happening for a while. Uh, I can't go shop with you. Yeah, I know, right? It's embarrassing. It's <laughs> pathetic. You might call security on me, think I'm a scammer. Oh, no. That's a fucked up feeling though when you feel like you're scamming, but you're really using your own money. Yeah. But you feel that, like that, you're that, scamming. That, that's how that decline feel. Oh yeah. 
That's that decline. You feel like everybody in the whole that building everybody knows. Everybody looking at you. <laughs> so when that shit decline, you like, oh, hold on, my bad. Right. <laughs> so since that song dropped, though, you feel like you see the the OTF fans tapping in with you more and everything, seeing his fan base actually yeah, realizing yeah, what you a, got going on? And a lot of niggas that I've been hit up for features mm. DM me back. Blood ain't see the message. You've right. been saying this. Your ass just didn't reply back because I want popping. Uh, I know what's going on. It must be crazy being a rapper, though, because do you, do you hold a grudge against those kind of people for I life? I don't hold the grudge because, shit, I'm going to do the same thing. Mm. I'm going to be the same way. Business if it ain't the beneficial day. or if it ain't your ass out of there, mm. um, bro, no features, no nothing. If it can't uplift me, your ass out of there. Right. Um, bro. But you got well, homies. If I don't fuck with it organically of me and my personal right. heart, your ass out of there. But your homies, you fuck with them. Come on, my like homies, whatever, right? they with me day one, in and out, through whatever, up and down, highs and lows. I right. can't forget about them. Definitely. Um. Okay. Yeah, and you know what's funny is when I was watching that first interview that we did back in the day. I hated that interview. You hated it? Why? I hated it. Cause I don't know. I, f- I don't know. I felt like it was rushed, and I felt like we was talking about a lot of goofy ass shit. For real? I don't even remember anything goofy, but I remember pressuring you to do the interview. Like, yo, I fuck with these songs. You got to come out and do the interview. <laughs> I was hitting you like really <laughs> pressing you. Like, we got to get this now. I was like, this is the one. Yeah, um, bro. Now I fuck with the whole podcast though. But in that interview though, I was uh, you were I was asking you what music you were into, and you were talking all about how you were a Dirk fan. Yeah, so it really came yeah. full I've, circle. I've been a Dirk fan. Right. Since day one, hell yeah, that's broski. Talk that shit. Right. Um, okay, you're in the public eye. All of a sudden, you're kind of like a clout lick for a lot of people who might not have that much going on. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say names, but I was scrolling through YouTube. All of a sudden, I found a video on a certain YouTube channel from a young Chicago videographer talking to some dudes I never heard of before. And they talking about Lil Zay. They got negative shit to say, yada, yada, Man, yada. You know, everybody going to have negative shit to say, gang. You feel me? Mm. I, I did shit to a lot of people that can never be taken back. Mm. Niggas did shit to me that can never be taken back. Right. We enemies. Enemies <laughs> going to talk about enemies. They going to say the worst, hurtful, bogus. Right. Niggas might even lie. Yeah. You feel me? I like, was watching so, it thinking... I don't know if I believe. And it, it wasn't really anything that specific. It yeah. was kind of like, oh, it sounds like he don't really fuck with y'all. Yeah. Niggas just hate. Niggas just mad. Right. Fucking niggas bitches. But the game is weird now, though, right? Because Fucking it's like that, that's an entry point into getting known. It's yeah. like if you have an issue with Lil Zay, all of a sudden that makes you're you. Gonna go, you're going to go tag him. You're way go more interesting than just being you, yeah, right? Yeah. Way more. Yeah. Niggas can't beat him nowadays. Right. I don't know. I feel like niggas clout chase all type of shit. I don't condone that shit. Okay, but here's the question: Would you ever hold it against the videographer, the person who filmed it? Like, what if I was the one who did that interview? I interviewed. I would not do this, but if I interviewed some you, random you motherfuckers, not. because and they got something to say about you, are you looking at me crazy because I platformed them? Hell yeah! Because why the fuck would you go interview some random ass motherfuckers that can't even uplift your platform? Yeah. You ain't even go get the nigga that can't uplift your platform. You go get the nigga that can't. Mm. To talk about the nigga that can. Right. That don't even make sense. Yeah. Your platform ain't going nowhere. Your shit in the mud. Your shit ain't never going to the top. All right, but what if the person who's talking shit is actually somebody who was really like close to the person at hand? Because the thing that's popping off in my head, I'm thinking about the whole thing with No Limit Cairo and G Herbo. When, mm-hmm. when Cairo comes out and has all this stuff to say, I mean, everybody was watching it. But also, like for me as a person, I'm but thinking I don't a, know that's how. That's a nigga that you seen with her. That's what I'm that's saying. That's a nigga that you seen the video right there with her. Right. Right now to this day on shows with her, like sitting right here with her, like that's a nigga that you always seen around her, like right. up to date. Yeah. You feel me? Like if bro, I hung with a lot of niggas back then when I was a young nigga. Right. I fuck around, took their guns before. <laughs> I hung with them that took their guns. I hung with them to rob their ass, to rob their people. Right. It was always something. If it wasn't me or my niggas, I wasn't fucking with you for real. I was using your goof ass for something. Right. I mean, bro, I was acting bad when I was young. But bro. you respect people who get their name up by basically, like, talking about people that's they used to be cool with. That's how niggas don't get their name up, like, talking about a nigga that's relevant. You right. ain't relevant. Your ass out of there. Yeah. I mean, that, that yeah. hype is very unlikely to last too long, right? Yeah. It ain't going to last, especially with me, because I'm never going to respond. Especially mm. on no internet. I ain't give you no feedback, no comments, n- no publicity at all. Your ass is going to be talking to yourself in these interviewers. They going to come and try to interview me. I'm not doing it. Like, you feel me? I ain't going to. I'm not no internet arguing ass type nigga. I don't be doing all that shit. On, I go to jail. Right. 100%. 
I was doing an interview with uh, Joe Budden the other day, and he was giving me a hard time about interviewing street rappers and asking them about street shit, basically. Asking them about people they don't get along with, you whatever. You said Joe Budden? Yeah, That's yeah. the bald head interview dude. <laughs> Does he have a baldy under there? Yeah, you usually got a hat on. But No, I think I saw a video with him and Quavo or some shit, or him and all of a sudden or some shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, they almost, they almost ran up on him. They stood up he was scared and looked shit. at him, and he wasn't feeling it. It was awkward. Academics were sitting there, too. Yeah. That was a classic moment. But, yeah, he was kind of giving me a hard time about, like, you know, interviewing dudes who were on some street shit. They pulled up some certain different titles from different interviews I did, and they're like, how are you asking? You know, like, one of the old ones was, like, I asked Vaughn about Duck. But I, you're an interviewer, blood. You're going to do that. That's what interviewers do. Don't go on the interview or don't answer the question. Mm. That shit's simple. Right. You only, like, if you ask me some shit, I can only trick on myself. That's if what I'm I saying, said, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just be like, go to the next question or whatever. There are some questions I could ask you that you would be mad at me for having the fucking audacity to ask it. Uh, 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 for for sure. For <laughs> right. sure. So you shouldn't need ask that. But most questions is like you can answer it in a way like even me me bringing up people that you might have issue with i mean you could you could spill the whole thing you could say well this happened and he called I'm me not, and he I'm said this gonna, it depends right. on who it is and what the situation is right i ain't going to always speak on everything and tell a whole story about it i'm like <laughs> <you hear me? laughs> and Bro. but that was part of what they said is like i was like listen a lot of times I'll ask a dude a question and they don't really answer it because they're smart enough to know that they don't want to, you know, incriminate themselves or say anything crazy. Yeah, but yeah, then their response was like, these dudes aren't smart enough to know what to say. And I'm like, how are you rolling around with the the world, the, the view of the world that these dudes aren't smart enough to think for themselves? I don't look at the average rapper that I interview like a fucking idiot because most of them, when I ask them about crazy shit in the interview, they don't tell me shit. Or they'll right. say, they'll hint at little shit, they'll kind of let you know, but they ain't yeah. really incriminating themselves. And that's why yeah. in the whole history that's of rap... That's why I say it's really up to what you say. Right. You but, know what but in the whole history of rap interviewing, almost no interviews have ever been used in court cases, whereas lyrics get used all the time because the lyrics are way you, crazier. You, you never know. This is real crazy. They'll bring up a motherfucker. They'll start got them taking interviews and incriminating motherfuckers. You'll be like, damn, I wish I'd have never said that. Sometimes it surprises me that interviews don't get used more in uh Let's let's stop Court talking shit. about it for a do. <laughs> yeah, but, but you ain't gave me nothing to work with because you're looking out for yourself, right? But that's the problem is some people they they they're not looking out for themselves. They're looking out for the fans. They want to look hard for the fans. So when some shit comes hard. up, they can't the hold them. The fans don't even know me for real. They know my music. Right. You like they having that separation? I, hell yeah, I love having that separation. Into I give you what I want to give you when I want to give it to you. Right. You feel what I'm saying? You not gonna pressure me or none of that to give give it to you. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like that's how I am for real. That's the thing with me on being a YouTuber and being a rapper. It's kind of like being a YouTuber where when I started. Every single thing that was in my life was content. I was, you if put I, it out there? If I'm kicking it with a girl, she's in the video. Why, if, though? if I hire somebody, boom, we're talking about hiring them in the video. Now I'm actually getting to the point where I'm like, all right, I'm going to have things in my life, and I'm going to not talk about it. I'm going to keep it secret to me. It's not content. Yeah, yeah. You got to be like that, blood. You can't get them everything. <laughs> um, you can't. can't do that. Bro. Yeah. I mean, as a rapper, a for gift, sure. It's a gift and a curse, bro. Yeah, 100%. Um, okay, what what's up with the Trenches Baby series that I've been seeing you do on YouTube? Oh, okay. Um Explain the how Trenches this works. Baby series. It was really like um made by um this uh what the fuck you call it? This nigga named Clinton. Okay. He the one that wrote the movie and shit like that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? My manager, that's my manager friend and shit. So he wrote the movie and we was just trying to make it like Something that fit me, like where I'm from, how I grew up and shit like that, the shit that be going on, like where I'm from. Right. So he wrote he wrote it, and I'm just the actor in it, the main character in it. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? But he wrote it. And we doing like series, it's like we did like one one to four. But it, it got a lot of good feedback. Right. So it was like, we need to do a whole movie, or we either need to continue these series on YouTube, but I don't really want to do YouTube because I want this shit to be on Netflix, Tubi, or some shit like that. Mm. You feel me? Because I know for the they kids? don't. Uh, nah, or are you nah, trying nah, to keep it nah. adult? It's it's for the adults. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I know they going to, you know what I'm saying, like gravitate towards it. You know what I'm saying? That's why I want it to be on like all them platforms Netflix, Tubi, right. all that shit, bro. We because you see how your kids a... love cartoons and shit, right? Yeah. So you're kind of like, damn, that's that's. 
kind of a different level of love right there mm -hmm. that people are able to get through that. I don't know if I'm ready to turn on Coco Melon though and see Lil Zay Osama stomping through there. No, nah, hell fucking no. Nah. <laughs> you got to have your own series? No, nah, hell no. Nah. You got all types. It ain't just kid shit on Netflix. Right. It's adult shit, oh, yeah, Tubi, yeah. all that. That's what the that's what the series is in for adults. You know right. What I mean? Of course, kids gonna watch it, but it's really for adults. You feel me? It's shit in there that certain kids don't need to see. You feel me? One hundred percent. But how how do you feel about what you allow your kids to be exposed to? Like, would, would you let your kids right watch now, it? Right now, they right now they young, so it's like right. only thing they picturing in their mind is that that. Whenever they see me, it's just that that. It ain't nothing else. You feel me? So yeah, hell yeah, they'll sit down and watch it with me. Mm. My movie is I made it. My kids gonna see this. Hell yeah. But having kids, how? how if they... I'm having sex or fucking raw <laughs> or some goofy, like hell, no, I ain't even let my kids see this shit. Right. You no know, explicit shit like that. Cartoon version of you fucking a bitch would be extra. Nah, they not watching no shit like that. I need that. a warning before that comes on. You, f <laughs> you funny as hell. Make the kid go to a room. But all right, having kids, does that change how you think about? your career and how important it is for you to be successful and everything you yeah, think it yeah. made you grind harder yeah it make me grind harder you know what i'm saying because like it's a lot of shit that my mama wasn't able to do for me when i was young a lot mm. of shit my daddy wasn't able to do for me when i was young i damn near didn't even have a bedroom my whole life you know what i'm saying i had to share a bedroom or mm. you know, like all type of shit i don't want my kids to experience nothing i went through baby zay don't need to be going to steal no cars you know what i'm saying like they don't need to be doing nothing, but right. know, I want them to have them set up the right way. You feel me? Right. On every level. The opportunities that you missed out on. Hell yeah, cause I was young, dumb in the streets, ain't high shit, blood. You know. Mm, definitely. That can't be the cycle. Is that ever hard though when you're away from the kids for a couple weeks at a time or whatever? Because you're grinding, you're out working. Yeah, I'm always out working. I'm always out grinding, but you know, I still make the time to go see my kids. Right. Still talk to them on Facetime on daily. Still take them shopping, buy them shit, take them out of town. Right. You know what I'm saying? I still, I'm still able to do that. I ain't never not able to be no daddy do the music. Because I think a lot of times, as people in the rap world, that it's kind of considered like uncool to talk about your relationship with your kids. Sometimes, where the fuck you getting this from? You don't think that's true? Hell no. I think it's under discussed at times. If you scared to talk about your kid, your ass well need to die. I'm not scared, but okay, let me. Uh, what I was referring to is, you know, on the latest uh, deluxe on Dirk's tape, I mm -hmm. thought that was really big that he he came out and basically acknowledged that he had had like a realization that he hadn't been putting enough time into spending with his kids yes. and that he like has accomplished that's everything real, in the that's fucking real world. Grown man shit. Yeah, I was, I was impressed. Come, yeah, when you come to realize shit like that, that's real grown man shit that you. Take a responsibility for your fuck ups and your wrongs, and really trying to get on top of your shit. That's grown man shit. Definitely. I salute that. And a lot of a lot of people in rap though, they don't, they're not trying to be open. They're not trying to show you that they aren't perfect. They want to present right. that they're perfect at all times. So to see somebody come out and Ain't say, nobody perfect. Listen, I fucking have changed the way I think about that. I, man, that I thought that was important. Yeah, I even said a, a lot of the similar shit in a couple songs too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like just talking about. How certain shit I ain't do for my kids, or how I need to do certain shit for my kids and shit like that. Like, right. You know, I mean, traveling is crazy because especially when they're as young as ours, like you just come back and they're a totally different person a week yeah. or two later. Yeah. But even me just going to work for eight hours, ten and hours. Ain't another line, Whew. blood. Because my daughter will be calling my name every day, all day. Right. I'd be gone for like a week or two, then I'd come back. I'd be like, "Come on, she won't come." Really? Yeah. It's like. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be catching that little whiff sometimes. Oh, I felt like that, like and a little tiny bit. And then when I'm back around for the, for the, for that period of time, it's like, oh, da, da, da. Right. And I'm gone. It's like, oh, this motherfucker steady leaving. It takes, <laughs> takes a little bit to warm up, yeah. though. Huh? It takes them a little bit to warm up to you. like Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. On my own, it takes a little bit for them to warm up to me. Yeah, that's a weird Like feeling. they got to re-know me again. Yeah. <laughs> we get to know me again. 100%. Um, okay, so like, what do you feel like is the the shit that you really want to accomplish this year in terms of like taking your shit to the next level? Because it feels like you're in such a, a good lie, space. Blood. I want to go number one. Mm. You feel me? I want to make sure I'm in a good space with my label. You know what I'm saying? Make sure they eating. Make sure I'm eating. Make sure my managers, my team, my family eating. You know what I'm saying? Make sure just everybody in a good space because. When they, everybody ain't in a good space that I love, that I care about, then it knocked me off track. I can't really focus and do what I need to do because I'm worried about too much other shit on my mind. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just really trying to stay focused 
on a straight line, you know what I'm saying? So I got to make sure all this taken care of so I can just do straight like this, you know? Right. From the kids to the family, the business, to everything. You in a relationship? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And it's your child's it's mother? It's my child's mama, yeah. Okay. So how long you been with her? Uh, like four years. Oh, okay. You feel like that's a big factor in terms of you being able to keep this like was, strong state of mind? Huh? Like in terms of just being able to keep a consistent state of mind, you feel like having a girl consistently helps you like to stay in the, the right place mentally? I ain't gonna lie, for sure my girl definitely be helping me like stay in the right. Like she like, she not afraid to say you wrong or mm. don't do that or that ain't right. Cause she knew you, know you long saying? enough. Yeah, she knew me long enough. Like, we got that bond, that relationship. Like, she going to always pick me up and let me know where I'm slacking, where I'm wrong, something don't look right. She ain't going to sugarcoat nothing. She's going to always keep it 100 to the T. And sometimes you know I mean? feel like my girl do a little too much of that. Because she knows she nah, can criticize it. me, so she just, like, almost exclusively criticizes me. And yeah. sometimes I'm like, bitch, I'm I need like- some compliments. Ah! I'm doing a great job. I need a little bit more focus on the positive. I'm about, hey, I'm about doing you ever brutal. been there? Hell yeah. <laughs> Like, bitch, you know what the fuck going on, man. Just because you're one Pat of the... Pat me few- on my motherfucking back when I walk in this bitch. Give me a... Exactly, yes. Rub my feet. Right. Do oh, something. yeah. A foot I, rub. I just texted her that a couple days ago. Right. You steady doing all this motherfucker complaining. Come on, give me a massage, man. Because they want to be treated like yeah, queens, yeah. but we don't really get to get treated like kings that often, right? Oh, bro. Yeah. Guys, take notes. This has officially become a red pill podcast. We got to talk about men's rights. <laughs> what do these girls got fucked up about men in general? Like, what, what what's fucked up about these girls they want these days? All the fucking money. They think men are supposed to just take care of them, and they supposed to just sit on their ass. Mm. I don't know where the fuck that came from. Right, bitch. I work. You work. We bring the money to the table. I respect that. Yeah. Like, ain't no just I'm working and you sitting on your ass doing nothing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Of course, some days, sometimes it get like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go out and handle my business and make sure shit straight. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like. For the most part, I don't want no bitch that's just sitting around not doing nothing. Right. Ain't got nothing going on for herself. But just, what, what about being a mom, though? That's a pretty big job. Being a mom, for sure. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's it's that, I right, being a mom from when, like, the baby born all the way up into the daycare shit. Right. Like, I feel like you're supposed to be on that. You could be a mom until that time, but then when the daycare time comes, you put on daycare or put him in daycare, and then you go handle your business, handle your... We take turns picking them up, pick them up together, however. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? But we still got to work and keep that shit coming in because you never know what my lifestyle be like. I can go I can go here. I might need you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If you can't come for me, then what the fuck is this about? Right. You know what I'm saying? So we both got to hide that. But I've seen this conversation on some podcasts that's basically like, once a guy gets rich, once a guy really gets to the point where he don't need, you know, like a lot of guys are in a relationship with a girl just because they got to split the rent, you know? But once a guy gets rich... Does he want a girl who's a businesswoman, who's really, like, motivated, entrepreneur, I I who's kind of like you, or do you want someone who's just hot and is going to sit around and do jack shit? I'm, I'm going I'm for not, the entrepreneur. I, I, I want a girl not, with some energy. Look, look I'm not going to lie, blood. I can't really speak about that because I'm not financially at that place where I can just be like, all Chill, right, baby, yeah. you ain't, you ain't got to work. I got you. Right. Your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really speak on that, but, like, I need a girl that work. I need a girl that got energy. I need a girl that like to have fun. I mm. need a girl that know how to have sex. You know what I'm saying? I need all that. So that's a big I need factor. A real woman. You couldn't marry a girl before you had sex with her. Hell, fucking <laughs> no, boy. That's what you're supposed to do, right? Hell no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Um, bro, y'all can go by the books if y'all. I was to. watching I some show. I see some religious person talk about that the other day. I'm like. What the fuck are you talking about? How do that even feel, blood? You got to go home to a bitch every night you ain't hit, and you going out in the streets, and these bitches throwing that pussy at you? Well, I'm me. cracking everything moving, oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going right back to the crib like yeah. ain't nothing happened. Get me the hell out of here. Um, bro, and then you're going to start seeing me get dissed. I ain't going to come to the crib no more. Right. You ain't giving me no pussy. It's over with. Because there's been girls where I was kicking it with them, going on a date or two. I thought they were the most beautiful fucking girl I ever seen in my life, and then I smashed and I was like, oh, never mind. Because that, you know, sometimes you just don't work. Let's let's not even blame it on them. But sometimes the, the chemistry ain't that great yeah, sexually, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I had those times. Too. Sometimes they might look good and the shit might just be a cavern in there. You funny as hell. I need some grip. What, folks, don't you do porn or some shit? Yeah. You slow as hell, blood. No, because then I'm a, I know what I'm talking about. I'm a pussy master because I've seen it up close and personal 100,000 times. So I'm a pussy master too. Do I need to go do porn? You may be, but there's no public record of it. Ah! <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> it's a public record, man. Yeah, but you just ain't released it yet. <laughs> Ask around. Maybe the music shit don't work. Then you could. Oh, you had leaked sex tape. Man, you you got me fucked. Oh, I gotta cop it. that. You funny as hell. Damn. <laughs> hey, drop the comment down you below. We need to see the little Zay tape. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm proud of you. Shit's doing good. The music is dope. Gu- is dope. It was dope getting to listen to a lot of the music. Did you building to Church up. Baby Three. Yeah. Name a song. You want me to pull uh, up album fun. music no, right I now? I'm a fuck. No, I want you to tell me right now. No, I listen to it in the car. In the car, I I I don't know if I can name a song. Sixty third to sixty fourth. Was that the today before that? Sixty first to sixty fourth. There you go. Uh, but that's a song yeah, right now. You ain't I'm not officially to, caught man, up on the Chicago to geography. Baby 3, bro. Go listen to Trench Baby 3, bro. I'm going to spin you. it on the... We're going to play it out here while we take the photos. Yeah, for sure. Listen to that shit. That's the hardest thing. I, I was man. too caught up listening. I'm still alive. I'm still alive. We're going to get you on that remix. I ain't hopping on that shit, boy. Damn. All right. Lil Zay Osama, I appreciate you, man. Y'all already know, man. Y'all make sure y'all go get that Trench Baby 3, man. Y'all go watch Trench Baby, the series. You know what I'm saying? All that shit dope, man. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate my nigga Adam, man. Shout out No Jumper. My boy. Let's get it. Go turn him up on Spotify, Apple Music, all that shit. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, Instagram, Spotify, etc. Like, comment, and subscribe. We out. Wow. Wow.